no one's going to come to your website, click on a button and purchase a $50 million contract from you. <laughs> but what they're going to do is they're going to use your website as a tool to get to know you, to get to trust you, and then get to like you. And that's why I'm very, very happy to welcome to Construction Genius, Buzz Bazinski. <laughs> that's a great name. Uh, he's a lifelong entrepreneur and a digital marketing thought leader. And he's also a best-selling author. And his company is all about helping you to develop website strategies that attract and convert the right clients with the right projects in the right locations. And if you want to learn how to do that practically from a strategic point of view, listen to this episode. This is an episode I think that you can listen to twice, at least, because of the variety of different tactics and strategies that we talk about. And what you need to know is how to nail your voice, how to know your numbers, how to grow your business with the right clients and the right projects and the right locations. I'll repeat that again and again. And Buzz knows how to help you with that. So take careful notes if you're not driving and listen to it more than once and share it with other people in your organization who would benefit from listening. Let's dive right into that interview. This is Eric Anderton, and you're listening to Construction Genius, a leadership masterclass. Thomas Edison said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. If you're a construction leader, you know all about the perspiration, and this show is all about the 1% inspiration that you can add to your hard work to help you to improve your leadership. Buzz, welcome to Construction Genius. Thank you, Eric. I, I'm, I'm assuming you're the genius because because I, 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 there's only two of us here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, I, I know I've said this before on this show, but people ask me sometimes, that's kind of a cocky name for a business, Construction Genius. And so I tell them it comes from the, the Edison quote that genius is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. So in my view, my clients... And the folks in construction who are listening to the show, these guys are the geniuses. I'm just adding that 1% of inspiration and help. And that's why you and I are chatting here today. I love it. I like that. Very cool. So you're an expert when it comes to website marketing. And I'd like to just to kick it right off by asking you, what is the biggest misunderstanding that commercial contractors have when it comes to website marketing? Well, the biggest misunderstanding is that our web in commercial contractors think that Everything has to do with their connections um, when it, it's face to face, which is partially true. The yes. problem is that, that they forget is that when people meet you or they're introduced to you and you have an initial conversation, they're getting to know you and they want to know yeah. more, right? We do business with people we know, which is the first part. We got to um, meet you like, yeah, hopefully you had a good conversation there, but then the trust issue. And short of hiring somebody right off the bat, which most, you know, general contractors are not just going, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you have you have a license. OK, you can go work on my big project. That's just not going to happen. Right. No, they're going to go do some research on there. They're going to take a look at what other people say about you. They're going to look at some of the work you've done and all those types of things. Guess where they're going to go to first, though? They're going to go to your website. The misconception is that people don't do that when their statistics show that over 67 percent of all B2B uh, transactions start with a search query to find somebody's website. And so what you have on your website then becomes who you are, right? Because remember, our websites, um, or most people don't realize is that our websites are the only salesperson who say exactly what they want. Uh, we want them to say every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, they never take a vacation. It never asks for a raise. It never complains, right? And yet we ignore it. General contractors are notorious for it because they see it as a, 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 an expense, uh, a line item expense versus a profit center. So then let, let's talk about that. Um, the, the idea of no trust and like is a, is, is a theme that we've hit on here before. What would you say are the vital elements on a website that help to build trust when someone's visiting. And, and, and we're thinking about like immediately, how do you, how do you be, you really get that hook in there? The biggest thing um, we could dive, it's the, it's the talking to your 
perfect client versus talking about who you are. So uh, I love the saying that says, nobody cares what you know until they know how much you care. Okay. And now in commercial contracting, we're not very touchy feely people, right? But we're still human beings, right? We're, We're human beings. We need to, we connect with other people just like everybody else. Now we might do it in a different fashion, which is fine. That's how we approach that that verbiage that we're going to put on the top of our web page, but we still have to connect. So if we're talking about a website that is trying to attract a certain type of, of uh, either a general contractor or a subcontractor, whoever your, your perfect client is, and we can talk about that in a minute. Um, when we're, when we're constructing the top part of our website, the hook is connection, not features, not services, not about us, not about anybody else we've done business with, not about any of that stuff. Connection. I'm in the right place with the right people. Now I want to know more. Okay. So connection that, that, that's a little sort of, sounds a little, you know, fuzzy and warm and fuzzy. Uh You know what I'm saying? So, so (laughs) tell us what you mean by connection. Sure. Okay. I have a client who is a fractional CFO, chief uh, financial officer for commercial construction companies. Okay. The first thing he says on the top of his page is the contractors fractional CFO, right? That's right. So if you're a contractor and you're looking for a CFO, you've now connected two dots. I'm in the right place. Yep. Okay. That, and that's his slogan. That's every word is. So when you sit there and say, Hey, who's Aaron arrow? Oh, Aaron's the contractor CFO. What does that mean? Oh, he helps people like double their profitability, dot, 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 dot. And they go through that whole process there. So it's what is it in, what is in it for me, right? So if I'm not looking for a, fr- a fractional CFO or I'm not looking for a CFO or anything even remotely related to financial help with my contracting company, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, let me ask you about sure. that. Um, because one of the instincts that contractors have sometimes is, is being all things to all people, you know? So do you do this? Yes. Do you do that? Yes. Yes. And so on my website, then what happens is you go to a commercial contractor, whether it's a sub or a GC, and you look at all the stuff that they do and you're kind of like, what what actually do, what, I mean, what are they really good at? And they're oh, we're good at everything, but you know, Mm -hmm. that's not true. So how, how do you help people overcome the challenge of having to pick sort of one message? You know, what, what's the logic behind that? Mm -hmm. So that goes into one of the objectives of the rule 26 and, okay. um, and, we, and we can discuss the, the actual rule itself, but one of the objectives is to increase your average revenue per client. And in doing that, we actually exercise this, uh, a workshop that identifies the most profitable clients a company has. See, we make money usually with most, like there's cash flow pretty much in every job, right? Yeah. Yeah. But not all jobs are profitable. Yes, and not absolutely. all clients are pleasure as are a pleasure to serve. Right. Yep. And so yep. if we're if we're dealing with a lot of clients that and this this comes from trying to be everything to everyone, right? Yep. So the first year you're in business, you're getting all the business you possibly can because you need to pay the bills. And the That's second right. year you start going, you know what? We really don't like this and you stop you you either price yourself out or you just say we're not we're not accepting um proposals right now or we're not we're not giving proposals right now okay right as you get more mature you start looking at the the swap of do i do i accept some that are a little painful because as the owner i don't have to do all of those uh, jobs anymore right Um, or do I just stick with the ones we all love right now? There is a wear and tear on your people dealing with what we call the pitas, right? And we all know what pita is, right? I don't. So what is that? That's a pain in the pain in the arse. The pain oh, in the, the arse. The pain in the ass, customers. <laughs> <laughs> I think they use yes. even more blunt language um, in, in construction. <laughs> there you go. Yes. So, I, and we used to, and, and we used to actually have in our project management uh, system a PETA discount. 
And when we say discount, we mean a banker's discount because when a banker yeah, right. gives you a discount, you charge, you charge more. Right. Yeah, so, right. um, so yeah, so it's like, okay, but the problem is this, we can charge more Torpeda, but what is the wear and tear on the psychology of all of the people involved in that that job you're sucking right. the life out of your people which makes them more inefficient and when the less inefficient they are the less profitable they are and your turnover goes up and 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 all the uh, the, this is the waterfall of issues right there so when we're looking for the type of client that is a good fit functionally and profitably whoo now the reason why would you not want to only talk to those types of people because I promise right. you this, there's more business for all of us than we can even imagine, right? The trick now is getting the right business to the right, the right customers, to the right uh, service providers, period, yes. end of story, right? Stop. And that's why I, it's, a, it's a mindset shift to say, listen, you don't need all of the business because you could actually do less business and make more money if you're only doing business with the most profitable of the prospects. Yeah. And that's absolutely true in construction as, as I know my listeners know. Um, so, so help me with this then Buzz, because you know, if I'm, if I'm an owner with a $50 million project and I'm looking for a GC to run the project, you know, I'm not going to, you know, mm -hmm. click here and buy now kind of thing. Right. When I go to no. the website, right. No. So I'm not buying, you know, absolutely like not. something off of Amazon or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not click here and buy now. So what kind of, you know, not to get too granular too quickly, but what kind of calls to action or what, what, what sort of process are you looking to take someone through when they're, when you're looking to engage them and to build trust when it comes to, you know, selling high ticket commercial construction projects? It's a beautiful question. When we're dealing with commercial contracting and the website is not necessarily there to sell anything, it's to right. inform Yes. right? We are in, in the, the person who's coming to your website as a commercial contractor who is looking for your service as a commercial contractor is looking to understand more about you, whether you're likable and trustable and trustworthy. Right. Mm, so there are okay. three elements that we need to put in there. So first we, we talked about connections. So once we've made the connection, we say, okay, this is the right type of general contractor because general contractor is too general, right? Right. We right. are the ex general contractor of these, this industry. Ooh, I'm yes. in that industry. I like that. Boom, done. Right. Go. So once we've, we've identified that, now we can start sitting there and say, these are the problems that we solve for our clients. This is why people love doing business with us. And we're describing the types of work that we are the most proficient at slash profitable slash more enjoyable for our whole staff to do. Right. And so now they're going, oh, I have that problem. I have that problem. I have that problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. They can solve a lot of my problems here. Great. So now they know they understand that you care. They understand that you're the solution. And now you're going to give some social proof. You're going to show some of the work, maybe some case studies, maybe some pictures of some of the projects you've worked on, depending on what type of contractor you are. But I can find pictures of work of any type of contractor and put to put on a website. And the people who know, know. Yeah. Right. When you put like an electric electrical contractors, um, brand new circuit, <laughs> you know, it's right. like, Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they ran the conduit nice and pretty. They yeah. had all of the cables nice and pretty, all of those things, right? How a plumber does the foundation. Does it, that actually line up with stuff? All of the little idiosyncrasies that make you the expert at what you do. You want to show that with pictures as much as possible. And you want to sh then show other people talking about how good of a job you did, how efficient you were, how personable the staff was. They showed up on time. They showed up with clean uniforms sometimes is a big deal when you're dealing with re, uh, you know, re, reconstruction, right? Or remodeling sure. and stuff like that, um, yeah. especially in commercial areas like hospitals and whatnot, right? So yeah. all of those things count and they're all little pieces of a bigger puzzle. And what you're doing is you're painting a picture of the perfect contractor, subcontractor or general contractor. Right. And so when I leave that, I might reach out to you through your thing. Hey, let's talk. But you probably already have my information. So you're probably right. just going to use whatever email or phone number you already have on a business card somewhere or jotted down from some, what somebody sent you. But the website did its purpose. Now, if you are a contractor who has more pieces to the sales process, then you're going to have call to actions that will make them make micro 
uh, transactions. These could be the checklist of picking the perfect electrical contractor. Right. Right. And what do you mean? Like, you mean like, okay. you know, five things to look for when you're p picking the perfect electrical contractor or what, mm -hmm. you know, pitfalls right. of, of hiring a general contractor and how to avoid them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, um, why people and something like that is basically just a reiteration. They're just check marks of all the, it's a bullet set of bullet points of all the things you just described on your website. So and then they make this. the discussion. I, I think one of the mistakes I've seen over the years is that marketers or whatever they're selling, um, they think they mm -hmm. know what their client's problems are, but then when they, mm. they either don't know what the client's problems are, really, they, they assume what they are and they, or, or they don't, they don't address them first. They just do features and benefits, but they don't do anything <laughs> linking it to a problem or, right. and, and if they do know what the client's problems are, they, they don't really understand them in the, in the words that the client would use. So how is mm -hmm. it that I, number one, understand, really understand my client's problems? And then number two, how do I articulate them in such a way that it resonates with the client as opposed to just resonating with me? Right, exactly. Right. Assuming we understand our clients is the biggest mistake in marketing, just like you said, spot on. What we forget to do is talk to our clients when we're doing market research. Literally just having a conversation. What do you like doing? Why do you like it? Why do you keep coming back to us? Right. Why is it that we're, why, why are we the top contractor on your list? Why am the, why am I the first person you call and just listen, right? Take note of the actual words they use. Okay. Now with that, then you're going to go and do some other uh, market research. But the first step is to listen to your current perfect clients and listen to how they say things and what vernacular they use to say it. Because what they say and how they say it is the most crucial part. Because if you start talking like your perfect client on your website and, and the, your perfect prospect comes to your website and starts reading what is in their brain, oh, what kind of connection did you just make? I'm yeah. home. Man, these people That's talk right. my language. Right. Yep. Eric, you and I were talking earlier and, um, and I, I talked, uh, we were talking about, you know, uh, no like and trust. You're like, I know those words. I love those words. You're talking my language. Let's go. Boom. Yep. Right. You want to do the same thing for the services you provide every time. And so is it as simple as just talking to your clients and asking them why they do business with you? hundred percent. Why do you like doing business with us? What makes us better than the other contractors you work with? What can we do better? I, when I do market research, I don't just do market research to get more clients, like more clients like them. I'm looking at ways I can provide better value to my current clients as well. Because a lot of times, what, so like when I had a creative agency where we were the, the general contractor of marketing, right? Yeah, and right. so we did it all. There were people who did business with us for years that didn't know we did everything we did. Right. Because we did not talk to our clients enough. We didn't ask what, what other services could we provide that you, that would be valuable to you? Right? So, so let me ask you though, it's, it's interesting. So if I'm a general contractor, I know general contractors and they, they build healthcare, they build mm -hmm. life sciences, they might do commercial mm -hmm. ground up and which are all, you know, very different mm -hmm. types of projects. And, right. and so I want, I want all of those people to, to contact me. And, and I, and someone comes to the front page of my website and it's not just like, you know, Hey, I replaced windows and this is the window and call me. It's, it's a mm -hmm. much more complex than that. So how, how does mm -hmm. a, how does someone structure a website when their offerings are complex and they're in different segments of the market? So when you start talking about market segmentation, that's yeah. when you have a nice, pretty link up at the top that says industry served. Okay. It's one of the right? And then, oh, industries, plural. And they said the right thing here. We're this type of contractor and we work with these types of X. Okay. Right. Now, so if you're not in, in a single industry, then you're going to, you're going to have to go a step back uh, how, how uh, targeted you are with your, your opening line on your top of your page. Right. So, so, so let me ask fine. you that. What, yeah. Just, but, but what I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm curious about is let's assume that, that, um, I at least need to be able to capture someone's interest so that they look at the industry served, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but there's multiple types of people. So what, what is an example of a, a good tagline that might hook 
people from different industries so that they do click on that industry. I know I'm getting a little granular here, but yeah. that they do mm -hmm. go to that industry served uh, tag. Mm -hmm. What do I do there? Well, that depends. That's a, there's a lot of assumptions that we would have to go into, right? Because that hook, and remember, we need to understand who our perfect client is. There's got to be a common thread between all three of those industries okay. for you to properly um, market to all three of them at the same time. If there isn't, you have a, that's a bigger problem. And you haven't truly identified why all three, because there's only one most profitable. Then there's the second and the third, right? Mm, so yes. if you're really being honest about which one's the most profitable all the way down to the end, it's kind of like when we look at the NFL, right? it's like you have the, everybody's got the same scores as far as, far as the wins, losses. Then they go yeah. to the tiebreaker and then the tiebreaker and the tiebreaker. You might need to get down to that, that granular, right? And get in there. Because if you get all your marketing really good on that one and you start nailing that faster versus fishing in five different parts of the pond at one time, right? You can, you only have one pole, right? So use that pole. Now I have seen people where they'll use uh, visuals of yes. three different types of structures that they like to work on, right? Yes. Or, or representation of three different industries they like to work with, right? With one combining hook across all three of those images. So a combining hook, for instance, and this is a very simple one, could be because, you know, when I talk to my clients about being profitable, it's right client, right project, right location. So right. what it could be is that if you're located in just one area, but doing a variety of different projects, it could be the general contractor of choice in this geographic location or something like that. That's just throwing exactly. out an idea. That's super easy. And the nice thing about that is, is SEO right? Search engine optimization. What's that? So sometimes, so, <laughs> right? right? Sometimes yeah, people on, don't know. <laughs> people don't know what they're looking. They, they know the problem, but they don't know who, right? Right. So not everything is, is a referral. So it's like, oh man, I need a general contractor. That's this specialty. <gasps> Ooh, if you have a specialty, that's really good, right? Cause you might not know that person and nobody else is like, I don't know. Or Bob is a guy, but he's so busy right now. You're not going to get him for six months. Okay, great. Now I got to go to the internet and start looking. This is where that other 67% of people are doing. They're going, I'm looking for this specialty contractor for this type of work. Okay. Boom. Now, if your if your hook is, I am this specialty type of contractor in this area and you're spelling out what the area is and they're in that area, guess what? You're going to probably, you're, if, and all the other things are aligned, you're going to be the one that comes up at the top. And guess what it's saying? The best of the dot, dot, dot in the dot, dot, dot. Oh, shoot. That's what I'm looking for. Boom. <laughs> and when you're saying SEO, which what's important is that that has a lot to do with the the back end stuff that you're doing on your website. And again, I'm not trying to get mm -hmm. too granular, but what, I, what sure. I'd like to say to the audience is that if you don't know what SEO is, you, you need to find mm -hmm. out and you need to get someone in your business or someone from uh, mm -hmm. an outside consulting company to help you with that in terms of how you set up your website. Otherwise, you're going to be missing out on a lot of stuff there. And you can give me a holler if you don't have somebody already. Okay. We'll, we'll make sure that my email's there and I give a free consultation uh, to get you started so you at least know what that looks like and what you can expect from it. Hey, this is Eric. Hope you're enjoying my interview with Buzz. I know that I am. And just a quick time out in the middle of the interview to remind you about my book, Construction Genius, Effective, Hands-On, Practical, Simple, no BS leadership, strategy, sales, and marketing advice for construction companies. Let me tell you one thing that many companies are doing. I got an email this week from one general contractor, and he has bought copies for all of his executive team, and they're going to read the book together, discuss it on a regular basis so that they can glean the lessons that the book has to teach and help them develop as a leadership team. So run out to Amazon, grab yourself a copy. It's a very short book. That is, yeah, just about 175. So it's not going to take you all day to learn, but the information in here is tremendously useful and it will help you to be a better leader. So 
let's get back to my interview with Buzz. Let's go back up to some of the stuff we were talking about. One of the things that you talked sure. about in terms of building that social proof was like testimonials. So in your mm -hmm. experience, what is the best way to, to get a testimonial? And should that testimonial, in your view, be um, video, be written, audio? What Give us a little bit about that. <laughs> the short answer is yes, all of okay. the above. So okay. um, I did one actually for my fractional CFO um, and he had electrical contractor who just loved the work he did. They, they did a bunch of work for him, dot, 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 right? So I'm in there and I'm doing some work um, for his, his client uh, on their branding. And then while I was there, I said, hey, can we just set up the camera here and let's talk about the work that Aaron's doing for you? And he goes, oh, sure, let's do that. Okay, cool. And he, he, at first he's like, do you have questions? Like, we're just gonna have a conversation. Hey, how did you first meet Aaron? How'd you find Aaron? Why do you like, wh what did you like about Aaron? What, did, what kind of work did Aaron do for you? What's the outcome of what Aaron, Aaron's work has done for your company? Simple, simple questions. Keep it conversational. And then you have a, a video editor, cut that all into a little pretty montage of awesomeness. And you put that and you mix it in with a written, um, you can either transpose what they said in verbally into a written form right below that. And then what I like to do is then have a case study right below that so that it spells out the ABCs of what that happened. So if you're in a, if you're a type of contractor who is really good at efficiencies to where it's like, Hey, listen, you, your budget, you're already over budget and your last contractor screwed the pooch. Now you don't have all the money in the world to get dot, dot, dot. Well, I'm not going to cut off my nose despite your profits, but I will do X, Y, Z for you. So your bleeding is less. And so in my case studies, if I'm that type of person, I'm going to put out how I'm the most efficient X contractor because I do X, da, 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 and you're going to show that case study right there as proof. Okay. So that's interesting. So you've got the, this video, you've got the transcription of the video in some sort of written form, and then underneath that, a case study. So there's a, there's a, there's a sort of a triple fold effect there of building that credibility, mm -hmm. building not just the, the no, but the like and the trust. And the pictures so that because the pictures are worth a thousand words, right? So now I'm going to show you the work that actually happened. So we know this wasn't just some actor, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. that's actually the work they did. That is really cool. And if it is a notable project in your area that people are like, oh, I know that building. Make yeah. sure you put the building out the outside of the building. You might not have built the building, but the building is what people know. They don't know the circuitry. They don't know the plumbing. They don't know the yep. floors. They don't know the ceiling. They're the drywall they don't care about, right? But yep. all of those things came into building that building, and that's what everybody sees. Okay, that's good, good stuff. Okay, now... Unfortunately, I know a lot of contractors have spent a bunch of money on their websites and, and because they're not experts, it's like, dude, I need to build, I'm going to build my next project. I'm going to make sure we make some money on it. And here, let me write a check and give it to some dude to do something about my website. <laughs> so what are the biggest right. pitfalls that contractors come across when they're looking to upgrade their website and how might they be able to avoid some of those pitfalls? The biggest pitfall is hiring. If you, if you have a website that's not performing right now, the worst thing you can do is hire another web developer. I don't care how big of a firm it is. If they are not a marketing strategist, so like Buzzworthy, we're an integrated marketing firm. Okay. Website building is something we do as a result of the strategies we create, uh -huh. not the other way around. Because this is, there's two types of web developers out there. There are web designers and then there are coders. Okay. The people who are good at making things pretty versus the things, the people who can make things work. Very few have firms that do both. And those are the bigger firms and they're great, but they're tactical. So if you don't have all the, the, the marketing strategy in line, all they're doing is feeding off what you have. So if they just take a look at your website, maybe have a copywriter pretty it up, but there's no marketing research to back up the strategy and the, and the approach and the voice and all these other things, then you've just prettied up a pile of shit. Okay. You're so let me ask poop. you, you just polish. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. So let me ask you this. We're talking strategy, which is big picture. What are the, what are the, the, the pillars of a, a good web strategy? The, the fundamentals that I've got to nail. Mm. You got to nail your voice. All the things okay. we've talked up to this point is the fundamentals of a good message. Market okay. research, look, being specific, being clear, uh, clear, right? that that's a big thing those three things right there are like gold most people don't do that they go me we us 
It's all about me, right? I am, you know, we have been in business for 30 years. Who cares if you sucked for 30 years? Nobody cares until they know how much you care. So you got to nail your voice. But what's interesting about that Mm -hmm. is when we think about that, we then think of me speaking. But what you're telling Mm. us from what I can understand, it's not when you've nailed your voice, it's, it's the prospect or the client or the target person speaking on your website. Is that right? Yes, exactly. So there's a book called uh, by Donald Miller called story brand. I actually have it up on my, my uh, bookshelf behind me here. And it talks about making your prospect a hero, right? So in contracting is a beautiful thing because usually the person looking for the solution is the person who's been tasked to be the hero. So if you can make them the hero in the narrative on your website, they now put themselves into the hero's journey. They see this, their success through your services. They're buying their success, not your services at that point. And th- say that again, because what you just said is really important. Don't, don't say it slower yeah. and give us a little more on that. Okay. So if we're, if we're put ourselves in our prospect shoes, right, they have been tasked to be a hero and solve a problem, right? If they come to your website and they can hear, they can see their success through your services, they are now buying their success, not your service. Okay. See, that's, that's fundamental right there. Okay. So they can see their success through their, ser- your services and they're buying their success, not your services. And it's tricky. It's tricky, <laughs> but it, once you nail it, it's beautiful. We've talked about then how, how, to, how to, a little bit about how to find that voice in terms of market research. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What are the biggest mistakes people make in market research? They don't talk to their clients. They okay. actually go out and they look at other competitors in other regions that are very successful in the same niche. While that is one piece of it, your perfect clients are your perfect clients in your region. Not all perfect clients in every region are the same. So I, I had see. a fi- financial, this is not in, in the same industry, but I had no, a general contractor in Illinois <laughs> who looked at what a general contractor in Florida was doing. And he says, I want the same website as that guy. I just want our pictures. And I looked at what they were talking about down there. And I'm like, well, they're doing different work than you do up here. It's, it's a different region. They, they build things different. They have to deal with different uh, problems and all the other things that go along with it. The narrative is going to be completely off. Yeah. I don't care. That's what I want. Sorry, we're not going to do it. Well, yeah. Why won't you do it? I was like, because it's going to be crap and my name's going to be on it. That's no go. I've been in business for 17 years by doing good work, (laughs) not just taking people's money. Right. So, you know, we, we had to pass on that because they didn't want to do it. I had another general contractor who took a look at three different types of contracting because he did all three of those types of contracting. And then he said, I want to get a little bit of each of them on my website, but then he didn't have anything to back it up. And I'm like, well, you're not going to be able to do any of that search engine optimization without any content to back that up. Because if you have nothing to search for, for on your website, there's nothing for the search engine to pick up. Sorry, we can't do that project because you're not willing to admit that you don't have the expertise that you're trying to say you do. And that's the biggest thing is trying to stretch it, fake it till you make it mentality. No go anymore. People can figure that stuff out way too fast. And there's been too many cons in every industry now that people are skeptical and they will go to the next step to see if they see any kinks in your armor. Okay. So tell me, how can, how can someone take those first steps then to begin to recreate their website or improve their website, hone in their message, find their voice so that they can begin Mm -hmm. to drive revenue, maybe not directly, but indirectly through their Mm -hmm. website. So a lot of what we've talked about today, we, we went over a lot of stuff. If you're listening to this show, just listen to it a couple more times because yeah, right. totally um, Eric, There's Eric some brought gems up some here. really good points and he pulled out really good points from me that, that we, I usually don't even get to, to talk about. So this is, this has been a gorgeous show for the people listening here, but what, what we do, what we should do is then summarize a little bit of those first yes, steps. Please. The first yeah. thing is start talking to your clients, your perfect okay. clients, the ones that you, you're, so everybody's face lights up when they hear their name right when on. you're anxious to answer their phone the phone when you see them on the caller id when you don't avoid opening up their email in your inbox those people are the ones that we want to talk to take them to lunch just have a conversation have drinks with them 
do something nice for them and show them that you appreciate it. And during those conversations, find out why they appreciate you because it's a symbiotic relationship. And those symbiotic relationships are the ones that are going to make you or take you from a $50 million uh, company to a $100 million company. Yeah, excellent. Because you, you're just going to replicate the most successful and most efficient relationships right? And that sounds a little cold, right? Efficient and relationship shouldn't be in the same, they're they're, they're kind of not juxtaposed usually, but that is what we're looking for. We're looking for the natural fits. The harder you have to make that connection, the more work it's going to be to do that work. Because you're always going to be trying to, it's like the magnets are on two polars, right? They're not, they're, they're, they're repelling each other, right? So get, that's your first step. Get clear with that and then find out how many of those you have and then look at your market and say, how many of those could we have? Where do I look? How do, how do I, how do I look? How do I find out that number? So let's say I'm, I'm, you know, you're, I, you're, I'm in a, I mean, yeah, yeah. If you're 50 million, you yeah. already know. Like okay. every contractor I know that's at 50 million knows their market, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They okay. just don't know how to get to their market. And they, and they're, and they, and they haven't played with things like uh, account-based marketing and, and, and that could be another show altogether right there. Sure. But but when we look at that and go, well, shoot, there's not a lot of those here. So does that mean we need to widen our footprint or do we need to take a look at the second most profitable relationships mm. that we have? Mm-hmm. And maybe there's more, uh, more there. Okay, so that's fine. So you basically milked the unicorn for all it's got. If, if you can't find enough of that the perfect, okay, well, then let's get close to perfect and find ways we can be, make those relationships more perfect. They won't be as good as our unicorn, but at least we can work on making them better for ourselves, right? Okay. And then you do that. Once you have that, then call somebody like me and you can call me. I'd love, I'd love to work with people that are in construction. I love, I love, I have clients that have been with me for 12 years, went from 7 million to 15 million, 15 million, 50 million. That that's the, the growth is about a lot of the work that we're doing at the, at the forefront. Then it's just working through the industry changes over the years. Like everybody knows construction has changed a lot in 12 years, right? So that's not a problem, but get somebody who can strategize for you. If you have a marketing director, have them research somebody. Don't use your marketing director. They're a director, not a uh, strategist. Okay. You can use your director to execute strategy. So like I have clients now, like I have a, I don't know how big they are, but they're in the 10, they're in the over the 50 million mark. They have a full marketing department. They bring me in to talk to their team once a month to keep them on strategic trajectories that are going to be profitable for their company. That's all I do, right? So we can facilitate the, what I would call the mom and pop, where it's like everybody's operational and they've been basically just built upon the relationships of the owner or maybe a couple of account managers, project managers, um, and all the way up to full fledged. They've got a full C suite, the whole, and the, you know, the whole nine yards. So t- tell me a little bit about the rule of 26. Cause I know that's a book you've published yeah. and, and, and I think it has a lot to do with what we've talked about here today. Just tell us a little bit mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. So real quick, the rule of 26 states that if you increase your average revenue per client by 26%, your conversion rate from your website by 26% and the trap that unique traffic from your website by 26%, you will get a compounded output of 100% more uh, uh, revenue, sorry, from your website. Okay. And that's not necessarily a buy now, none of that stuff. All the stuff we talked about here is creating revenue for your website. Right. But that takes time. That's the thing, isn't it? Uh huh. Oh, it it do, it does. It does. This is not like the 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 dot com era taught us that uh, you know mega million um, or you know billion billion dollar companies are not all uh, you know they don't all uh, grow overnight, right? It takes time. Yeah. It takes in you know even Facebook, like it was not profitable for at least seven years, right? right. The, yeah, they were evaluated for their future uh, ability to make money. But they were not profitable for a long time, right? And in service-based businesses, and that's what I focus on only, and contracting is one of the the biggest ones in in this, it's not like you're going to be able to just go, oh, we're going to double up in a year. Right. You don't have the infrastructure, I bet. Most most people do do not have the infrastructure to to double up in one year, right? You want to grow smart, 
and grow profitably. Believe me, I built myself, I built multi-million dollar companies broke because I was growing. I, I was too good at marketing and right. not a good enough on my operations. Right. Yep. And it's like, well, yep. crap, we got to throw that away. And I got now I got to rebuild it so that I get the infrastructure right as we go back up. Yep. So, so it's interesting because w- what we've been talking about here is the whole idea of people buying from people that they know, like, and trust and how our mm-hmm. website, even in the commercial con- contracting space is a vital element of developing relationships with people in that way. Um, mm-hmm. As we're ending the interview here, Buzz, what would you say are the two or three things and feel free to summarize things that you've already said, but what are the two or three things mm-hmm. that, that I as the president of my construction company begin need to focus on right away to make a difference in terms of my website presence. You know, the, the, the most interesting piece, and I, I talk about it in my book is understanding your own numbers. Most people don't even know what their website is doing, right? So the one thing you can do right now, because everybody has a website and if they don't, they're probably not, they're, they're in a different echelon. And that's like, okay, but now we have to just deal with getting you a website, right? Yeah, right. But most of us have websites. Everyone listening has a website. I can promise you that. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, go. Cool. So with that said, you have somebody who built that for you. Okay. Hopefully you'll be able to talk to that person and get your Google analytics connected to it so that you can see the traffic that is coming to your website and what's happening with that traffic on your website. You can do that today. They can do that in an hour. And then have them show you what those numbers are. Have them explain it to you. And if they can't, give me a call. I do. I offer it in my book too. This is not just a special yeah. like me no, good. getting in touch with you. My big thing is this. If you don't understand your numbers, you don't understand how to market because you don't know what you're trying to do. You don't know what the goal is. And without a goal, you're just aimlessly going around going, oh, I hope something works. Right. And then you're just hoping for another unicorn. Right. right. And just stumble into it. No, we need to understand where you stand now and how bad or good is your situation with your website. Because that can dictate what your next step is. So I say the first thing to do is to get clear or at least look at your numbers and understand what they're telling you. Okay. So tell me if you can, this, this may not be possible, but tell me mm-hmm. three numbers that I should be looking at when I'm trying to understand my numbers. Perfect question. I love this question. One is unique visitors. Okay. So when you get your, get, so a lot of times when we connect our Google analytics or whoever does that for you, they're not, they forget to do this one thing and it's very easy to do. And if you're doing your own, you can Google how to do this. You want to filter out the bots. Uh-huh. Bots are just uh, pieces of code that come in and they crawl our sites yeah. to then report back to the search engines to say, this is what's going on on this website. Okay. For those who don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we need to filter out the bots so we can see the human beings that are going to buy from us. How many of those are actually coming to our sites? Yep. How many new viewers, uh, users versus uh, repeat users. Okay. So new users means that what I'm doing in getting the word out is working. Repeat users means that what I'm saying is useful and people are coming back for more information. Okay. So that, so unique visitors is number one. Then you want to take a look at conversion rate. Now that's going to be a little more, little more work because you're going to have to have your IT or your web developer set up what conversions are for your website. Is it a click to call from your website? Is it a contact us form? Is it a sign up for our newsletter? If you have a newsletter, most contractors don't, but you you know know what I'm saying, right? Some type of call to action. It could be that checklist to download. You give them an email, you get the download, right? Or you email them the download, right? So that you at least have that, right? Boom, done. Okay. So any of that. Okay. And then the third is your bounce rate. Now your bounce rate is the rate at which users come to your site and don't take any action and then leave. That's a bounce rate. You don't want your bounce rate to be more than 51%. The lower, the better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So unique visitors, conversion rate, and then bounce rate. Those are the three numbers I need to Mm -hmm. look at right away. Right away. Cause that'll really tell you that, that without looking at any other numbers and going very far into a bunch of analytics right this second, those will tell you whether 
or not your homepage is connecting with your visitors, how many visitors you're actually getting. And if they are connecting, are they actually making, are they taking action? Are right. they going, you could make it to where if they go to your contact us page, that's a conversion. Yeah. No, whatever I get that. you consider a win. Yeah. yeah. And whatever you consider a win is there, make that, that part there. Okay. So that's a good point for everyone to understand because they're thinking, well, dude, I, I don't have a million people calling me for contracts and I wouldn't want that either, but, <laughs> but a win, right. whatever a win is, that's a conversion. So maybe they watched a video mm -hmm. or they read a blog post mm -hmm. or they, you know, cause they might mm -hmm. call you in a year from now when the project really gets going kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where a lot of contractors forget is that most of the time, you know, all that time we talk about all the projects that could happen and then the ones that actually happen, right? Well, all that research they're doing on somebody's website. Yes, they are. It should be yours. Yes, they are. Excellent stuff. Excellent. Buzz, you've been tremendously helpful. I know this is very practical and people will be able to, like you said earlier, listen again to this session because there's a lot of information. Just tell us a little bit more about your company and how people can get in touch with you, please. Sure. Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing is a strategy first marketing, digital marketing firm, and we help uh, service-based businesses increase the profitability of their online presence. Um, I have my book uh, that you can check us out at buzz. Uh, I'm sorry, buzzworthy.biz. My email is buzz at buzzworthy.biz. And if you'd like to check out the rule of 26, you can go to rule of two com. It's on Amazon as well. Excellent. All those links will be in the show notes so you all can check it out. Well, Buzz, I really, really appreciate you coming on the show. You've been very helpful, very insightful, and um, I do wish you all the best. Thank you so much for having me, Eric. My pleasure.